a nice Thursday to everyone. Thank you for lending an ear to The Voice of the Times for February 18, 2021. For today's editorial, Quarantine Quandary. Coming as it did amid consistently optimistic government pronouncements that the economy is recovering and is poised to experience rapid growth this year and next, the warning issued by Social Economic Planning Acting Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua on Monday was startling. President Rodrigo Duterte should place the entire Philippines under the least restrictive Modified General Community Quarantine or MGCQ status, Chua told a meeting of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or the IATFEID in order to address rising hunger incidents in the country due to job and income losses. Chua, who heads the National Economic and Development Authority, pointed out that income losses due to pandemic lockdowns and restrictions on business activity reached an estimated 1.04 trillion pesos in 2020. Filipino households have been put under additional strain by high prices, with inflation climbing to 4.2% in January after reaching 3.5% in December 2020. Under MGCQ, most restrictions on businesses and travel are lifted although there are still some limitations on high-risk activities and the very young and the elderly who are most vulnerable to COVID-19. The easing of restrictions, of course, was the entire point of Chua's recommendation. From his economy-centric point of view, the negative impacts of pandemic restrictions are far worse and will be more difficult to solve than the infection itself. So as long as there are preventive and response measures in place to address the latter, The risk of erring on the side of too few restrictions is not as great as the risk of too many. We think Secretary Chua is correct, but we also think his call is a bit premature, which obviously presents quite a dilemma. There is no argument that lockdowns, though a reasonably effective pandemic control measure and definitely necessary at some point, have been utterly disastrous for the economy and for Filipino families very few of whom have been able to endure almost a year of restrictions. By the same token, there is not yet strong enough evidence that the pandemic is sufficiently under control that measures can be safely lifted. Consider the following troubling circumstances. While the Department of Health has highlighted that the mortality rate from COVID-19 is declining, New daily cases have added a consistent rate of between 1,000 and 2,000 per day for the past several months. The rate of new infections has also been spiking in several heavily populated areas, mainly around Metro Manila and Cebu. Medical resources for dealing with COVID-19 patients are more than adequate, although there have been warnings that Cebu hospitals are approaching their capacity. But that is not the point. Any infection, even a mild one, is costly and disruptive, not only to the patient and his or her family, but to entire businesses and communities. Vaccines against COVID-19 have yet to arrive in the country, the result of a few poor management decisions and intense competitive demand for supplies. This of course is a problem that could be solved eventually and with it any need for serious restrictions on business and personal activity. However, Until a considerable number of people have been vaccinated, perhaps 5 or 10% of the population at a minimum, the coronavirus and its three new variants that have been identified will still have an opportunity to spread with all the disruption and cost that implies. Perhaps the biggest stumbling block is public opinion and the views of local government leaders who are more directly responsible to the public than national level bureaucrats sitting in well-protected sanitized rooms. The recent announcement by the IATF EID that cinemas would be permitted to reopen was met with widespread consternation, with the overwhelming majority of people viewing it as an unsafe and unnecessary decision, a reaction that may have come as a surprise to the officials responsible for it. Loosening restrictions to allow more economic activity only works if the public at large feels comfortable in actually engaging in more economic activity. The recent reaction to the lifting of the ban on cinemas may indicate that people are not, or that not enough of them, are to make a real difference in boosting the economy. 
And that's the editorial for Thursday, February 18, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and listen to the voice of the Times.